Hello, everybody. Uh, thanks for coming. Uh, I'm going to talk today about tools. And first, let me explain by why Go tools are really special. So Go tools are really special because Go was designed uh, to make uh, tools easy to write. Uh, Go's syntax, naming convention, package systems are all part of this uh, design. What this means is uh, having this kind of mindset since from the beginning create an ecosystem that made hundreds of thousands of developers much more productive. And I'm going to highlight some of the best or most used tools in this list here uh, for each of this section. And let's start with formatting. As you know, for formatting, uh, there is not much to talk uh, because we have already a really nice tool for it and it's called GoFormat. And I mean, GoFormat is a really cool tool and it's basically the king of the tools and it just formats your code based on predefined set of rules. But someone decided to make it even more better. That particular tool is called Go Imports and this tool just like Go format formats your source code but it also updates the import paths for the identifiers in your source file. So uh, we are just going to write the log printer line and when we save the file it will automatically adds the log package for you. So let's move on for to navigation. And when you have a really large code base, you have to get a really uh, nice understanding what your code is doing. And you have to navigate from one file to one file. Or, and even more, you need to get a really nice insight. I mean, what are the functions doing? And where are they called? And so on. And for the navigation part, we can use the tool Go definition. And GoDev is just a command line application which prints the location and the line and column number of an expression in your source file. You, you, you only pass your file and then it just prints the line and column number. So how is this useful for us? So we can again integrate this into an editor and here we're going to put our cursor on top of println and then call GoDev. So what we do is, uh, here's a little example again. We are going to put, uh, going to call GoDev, and this calls, uh, opens the format package. And next, again, we are putting our cursor on the standard output identifier, and then call GoDev, and again, we just opened the OS package. So we can jump from one package to one package just with the tool GoDev. Another small uh, package is, I mean, uh, command line application is GoDev Graph. This is uh, just, uh, nice uh, application to create a uh, image for your dependencies. The blue ones are your custom packages and the green ones are the packages from the standard library. So let's move on for more complicated questions. For example, you might have questions like, what are the exported members of an imported package? Or for example, you have a type and you want to know which interface that particular type satisfies. For these kind of questions, we have Oracle, and Oracle is just, again, can be called from the command line. Just like GoDev, you're passing the file and the position of the expression, but uh, you also need to provide a mode, like uh, callers, callees, implements, and so on. And this is important because our questions are not the same, and that's why we need to also uh, pass this information to Oracle. So I'm gonna show one example about uh, Oracle callies mode. On the right side, we have a function on the bottom called hello, and it just calls the function with the highlighted, uh, with the red highlighted color. And when we ask Oracle what the possible targets of that particular function call is, Oracle will automatically point us to the functions that are passed to this hello function. A more complicated example is this free variable mode. Uh, basically, a free variable mode is you select a piece of code, and in this piece of code, when the variable is referenced but defined outside that selected scope, it means that is a free variable. So here, in this example, we are just counting new lines and, and then printing it. But what about reusing this a piece of code, this selected code here. So to refactor it out, we can use Oracle free variable mode. 
when we ask Oracle what the free variables are, it will just give an, uh, us an output and say the free variable is the string, uh, the variable message. So how is this useful? We are just cutting out the piece of code and putting it into a new function. This new function is called new lines, and the function arguments will be the free variables of that selected code. And this is really, really nice because you can refactor any kind of selected code and then create your own function. And the output doesn't matter. You can return it, you, print, uh, you can print it, it's just uh, for you. So let's move on. We have many other uh, tools about this. I'm just listening here. I'm just listing them here. Uh, just take a look later. So what about refactoring? I mean, refactoring is kind of scary and nobody wants to do it. But fortunately, we have uh, good uh, tools for Go. And one of them is Go Rename. Again, you can call it from the command line, but it's meant to be integrated into an editor. And when you pass the new name uh, to identifier and the, the expression, it will rename it uh, in all across the Go path to across all packages. Here is an example again, integrated into an editor. So when we put our cursor on top of the field name and we rename it to the bar, it will automatically uh, rename all the identifiers for us. And this works for all kinds of, uh, I mean, uh, definitions like I mean, type, function name, whatever. Again, another package is go move package. Usually when we move packages, we also have to import, uh, I mean, um, update the import paths or change the identifiers. So uh, go move package does this all automatically. So on the left side, on the bottom, you'll see that we are importing the bar package. And when we now move the bar package to the package foo, it moves the package and also updates all the import paths and the identifiers. So we again have some uh, other tools for refactoring, check them out later. And so code generation is really popular and it can sim simplify some of our repetitive tasks a lot, and with Go 1.4, we also had this new command called Go Generate, and this command scans for a, a, a special comment and executes the command inside that uh, comment. So how this uh, works, I'm going to show this with the Stringer uh, tool. So this tool creates a string method for our uh, integer type uh, constants, and here below we have this uh, string method and we created it manually. But when you go and create another constant, you have to update it yourself. And this is getting boring with time and time. And so what we do is we are going to remove this manually selected uh, piece of code and we're going to write a special command on top of, uh, on top of the uh, status type. And the command begins after generate word, so stringer type status. And so we are going to call the command go generate. So now we have only one file. If we call go generate, it will create another file. And when we open it, you'll see that it's uh, totally uh, generated automatically. So if you go and create uh, add another constant and up, uh, call go generate, it will update this file. And just like Stringer, there is also JSON enums. And, and this is just like a stringer, it uh, creates the Marshall JSON and unmarshall JSON methods. So you can satisfy the JSON marshaller and JSON unmarshaller um, interfaces. And so what about a tool which doesn't use Go Generate? So IMPL is a tool to uh, generate method stops. And this is useful if you have a large, uh, large interface type with a lot of methods. So Again, let me show this example. So we have a type and I want to create the method for the interface IO read write closer. And again, we can invoke it from the editor and it will automatically create all the methods for us. So suppose you have a, a slice of, a, a slice of a certain type and you wanna implement the sort interface and we can again create uh, the, again, um, call uh, go uh, the IMPL uh, command 
and pass the sort interface interface and it will create the meta stuff for us. This is also useful if you have a, a large database model and you implement it in over and over again. So we again have a lot of code generation tools. Uh, just, uh, just check them out later. So linters and checkers. So basically even if your code compiles, it might have a lot of problems and this means, uh, for example, there might be errors that you can't catch up, uh, that you can't see right away. And that's why we have code reviews. But even uh, humans can't see sometimes the errors and we can use some other tools for it. So this uh, example here compiles flawlessly perfect without any problem. But there are many errors. And you can't, uh, when we call GoVet on, on this, we'll see that there are many errors here. For example, the uh, build tag is badly formed, or for example, the field tags code is not closed. And this can be catched all by via GoVet. And the nice thing is, we can um, integrate GoVet into an editor. And again, this is the same file. When I call GoVet, it also gives us me the output the location and line number, so I can jump from one warning to one warning and fix my errors. But we have many other tools, uh, checkers. We have go type, go lint, air check, and so on. Uh, calling them one by one manually is really boring. So we are going to use go meta linter for it. And here's an example how this works. Go meta linter uh, basically runs all the checkers for us, and then normalizes the output. Here we are just calling first uh, the tools one by one. We are calling now error check, which checks for function who returns an error, but we didn't check for the error. We, and then we are going to call golint, and golint says, for example, that we shouldn't use the dot import. Uh, so when we now call go meta linter, it will call all these tools and then normalize the output, collect them, and print them. So we can uh, easily use all of our linters and checkers just with one command. Again, we have many, many other checkers. You can all add them to go meta linter and call it and improve your productivity much more. Uh, so testing is another whole topic. So I'm not going to talk about this much, but there is only a small uh, tool called bench compare. And this is when you have a lot of benchmarks, you want to see the difference between your old and the new changed code. So what you do is you are uh, saving the old uh, benchmark results in, into a file. You make changes and store the new one into a new, new file. And when you call bench, uh, bench compare, it will uh, show if, the, if your change really improved or not. And this is also used a lot, a lot by the Go team itself too. So, about dependency management, again, this is a whole another topic, and I don't want to uh, explain that much, but the, I just want to say one thing that, uh, I mean, if you, to, you try to use a tool, please use that supports vendoring, and vendoring is really important because I can guarantee that uh, if you're, I mean, I can guarantee that your application will be broken in at least in one or two months because uh, just keep uh, packages outside from your uh, source code uh, uh, garbage. So don't just vendor all your packages. We have many, many editor integrations for all these kind of tools, and probably you are well covered if you use one of these plugins here. And for Vimgo, uh, we try to implement and integrate all the tools that we uh, and still in improving and adding them. So, but what about building your own tools? So, we are standing on the shoulders of giants, but uh, we are really, uh, really not aware of it. And I've said in my, uh, in my starting, in my talk, I said that Go was designed to make tooling easier. Actually, it was also, uh, from the beginning, it had really nice packages. Just, uh, you can build your uh, own tools. And these are all, foundations and building uh, blocks that you can use
to make uh, your tools. For example, Oracle uses the Go uh, SSA package and Go format, for example, use the Go printer and the parser family. So all these tools that I've just mentioned are actually based on these packages. So that's it and thank you very much for listening. And I hope uh, after this talk you get just a profi uh, just like this uh, guy here. So thank you very much.